from the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. In SciTech Today, the next big breakthrough in robotics could come in a small package. Harvard scientists have set out to build a tiny robotic bee. Joining me now at the museum's Gordon Current Science and Technology Center is Alex Fiorentino. Alex, this sounds fascinating. Why exactly are scientists trying to make a robotic bee? Well, as you can see from these little friends behind me, uh, bees are actually fantastic examples of flying, communicating, and sensing machines. And so these graceful little insects have inspired uh, a multidisciplinary team at Harvard to try to make a robotic bee. Their idea is that by taking advantage of some of the amazing biology of bees, they could make advances in robotics, com computing, uh, even energy storage, and help them make these adva advances. Um, the National Science Foundation has just awarded the science a $10 million grant. So what will these robotic bees look like? Well, it's kind of hard to say exactly what the final product will look like, um, but it will build on some previous projects that these scientists have done. So, for example, the, the body and the mechanics of the robot will borrow from some previous robotic insects made by Professor Robert Wood at Harvard. Um, so I actually have a short video of one of these robots in action. Um, and so this is actually the first uh, insect size flapping robotic uh, or insect sized flapping robot to fly and it was done in 2007 it's about 1.5 centimeters long and as you can see it flies by flapping a single set of wings in a motion very like an actual insect so do we know how this new robotic bee will differ from the previous version well, if we think about this, this previous robot, uh, there are a few areas where nature is really way ahead of engineering still. Um, so for example, the robot relies on a tether to keep it pointed straight ahead. Um, it can't really steer itself. But for the RoboBee, the scientists are working to develop um, a whole set of sensors that can sense the robot's environment and allow it to make decisions about where to steer. Um, so in this way, it will be able to fly completely on its own. And also, you'll notice that the this previous robot has a couple of wires coming out of it. Um, it. It actually has to be plugged into an outside power source, which is not very convenient if you want to send the bee anywhere far away. So for the robo bee, the, the scientists are also trying to develop tiny batteries that could fit on the, on the robo bee and, and uh, give it a portable source of power. And finally, if we take a look at this hive behind me, which actually uh, some friends from the Essex County Beekeeping Society were kind enough to, to loan me for the day, we can see that bees are actually very social insects, um, or most bees. Um, and it's actually believed that they communicate with each other by dancing. Uh, so one bee will kind of waggle a little bit and communicate to the rest of the hive that there's a source of food nearby. So does this mean the robotic bees will be programmed to dance? Well, I would certainly enjoy that. Um, but in fact, the robotic bees will be programmed to communicate using state-of-the-art wireless communications technology. So this is really one of the most interesting challenges of this project. How do we uh, take a, a set of robots and allow them to communicate with each other and work together? Once we can do that, we can do all kinds of interesting things. So think of uh, something like a, a hive of bees or a school of fish or even a, an ant colony. Each individual is not really capable of that much, just simple, small actions. Um, but because they work together and, and coordinate with each other, the group as a whole is able to do amazingly complex and intelligent actions. So what kind of applications will there be for these robots? What are the possibilities here? Well, you could imagine all kinds of applications for a sort of smart, agile, coordinated robot. Uh, one of the first that comes to mind would be something like a, a spy bot that could sort of sneak into dangerous areas and gather information. Um, but you could also imagine using this kind of robot to monitor uh, environmental changes or even to pollinate plants and, and maybe try to make up for some of the current shortages of, of actual bees in North America. Alex Fiorentino, thanks for joining us and be careful with that beehive behind you. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. And remember to join us every Wednesday at 530 and Thursday morning at 930 for SciTech Today.